Hey everyone, today I have a very special lady. Um, I'm very, very grateful that she found some time to talk with me today. And this is Kim Voigt. And I tell you how I came across Kim. Uh, Kim had an interview recently. She has her own channel, Embody Light. And this is also her website, which I will attach down below. So you can scroll down under the video and just connect there with the YouTube channel and with her website and her work. But I came across Kim very recently in one of the interviews she had. And I felt in an instant this resonance with her energy. And um, I think also not just the message she was delivering, but the timbre of her voice was really resonating with me. So there is so much we can talk about with Kim. I would like you first to maybe say, what kind of work do you do so people have an awareness? And then I have questions for you, Kim. Thank you for being here, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Well, I do a variety of services and how this all started was in my own personal healing journey, I realized there were some things going on that just weren't making sense. I was highly triggered by things that shouldn't have been that big a deal. And so I started working on myself and within that process, I would find something that worked and I wasn't especially satisfied. I initially started out in traditional medical. I, I didn't like it. I wasn't satisfied with that. I knew there was more and I could see um, where it was more profit based than people-based. So I just started studying and learning all these different techniques like hypnotherapy, cranial sacral therapy, myofascial release. Um, I learned something called self-awareness program. And every time I'd try something that would help me, I'd take the training for it. And then I studied healing touch. And then, oh, about a year and a half ago, it just got time. I always tried to do this part-time along with my traditional job. It was just, I can't do that traditional job anymore. And I, I left and I started doing this full-time. So what I help people to do on their journey, because the only thing that's preventing them from reaching higher states of consciousness are blocks in their energy fields. And so we locate those blocks and do whatever's necessary to clear them out. Okay. So let's start with the ascension process right now the timeline we are on and how this is related kim to each individual akashic record okay so we've all had many lives on planet earth and each of our lives are recorded there's a grid on the earth that's connected to the Akashic records. All of our lives are recorded in this grid. So lives that have en ended where there was happiness or lives that have ended where there was tragedy. And those tragedies and traumas, they're still kind of um, playing out on those grids. So what happened, you, you know, you hear stories of maybe where people see a battle scene and there's like ghost soldiers still playing it out. That's what that is. Those are those memories in that grid. So what happens is um, you're born, you come into this planet and you start feeling into that grid. So those tragic things that have happened, you start feeling them right away. And you remember the ones that you were involved in, um, not consciously, but unconsciously. Those are those things that trigger you. So in this lifetime in particular, because this is the time where we're shifting the timeline and it's an ascension lifetime, the lifetimes that we've had that haven't, that aren't complete where, um, you know, we've got unfinished business or resentment yeah. or whatever, we're working those out in this lifetime, often with the same people that played those roles in other lifetimes, or maybe someone different playing a similar role. So we're working on multiple timelines to clear them up. So a lot of people are having memories of specific lifetimes and things that happen. Once we do our healing work, it doesn't matter if something happened 300 years ago, something similar happens now, you do the healing work, mm -hmm. that takes care of it because you heal in the now. So that takes care of the healing for this time and for the last time. Okay, so the question just immersed in me. 
You know, I, I just wonder which I absolutely am on the same wave of thinking and feeling as you're saying. I resonate with this very much. But my question is now, especially in those last, in the last year, Kim, when a lot of relationships in a way naturally dissolved, many people are not able to find a way to communicate or resonate with many friends or family members. Would you say, which I think is a very natural way of releasing, but would you say this is also healing some past lives in this way? It is, it is, um, because many of, I, I worked with many people who in past lives where they've um, been on a spiritual pursuit or they were killed or prosecuted for those beliefs. And so a lot of people are really afraid to step forward and live their truth and bring those beliefs forward. And that's exactly what they're here for. Mm -hmm. You know, they're here mm -hmm. to, to move through that fear mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. be able to do it. Um, if, you know, you had lifetimes of being disempowered, you get your power back this yeah. time, but you most likely are going to have to take that step to take it back yourself. Yes, yes. I feel this for so many people, like they call them like truthers now that mm -hmm. came out and they are regular people who want to communicate the truth they know and the knowledge and even the visions, you know, the psychic visions they have. Um, I think this is the time when they won't be suppressed like they used to in Middle Ages or other, other times in history. And the universe, um, the spirit supports them at this, at this time of human history. So where are we now, Kim, as far as the timeline from your perception and, and spirit knowledge now? Well, from my perception and what spirit has told me, um, I was actually shown a vision and this was quite interesting. It looked like a tapestry, a beautiful scene, you know, na nature, beautiful trees, mountains, valleys. And then and they showed me it was ripped in half. It looked like, like, uh, just like you'd rip a piece of paper. And then they showed me it started coming back together. And they, what my guides told me was that was actually back in the flood in Atlantis, where our picture of reality, um, our paradise timeline was ripped apart and it's repairing itself and it's coming back mm -hmm. together. And I got so excited. I was like, oh yeah, it's happening, it's happening. But then my guide settled me down the next day and said, well, this is gonna be a couple years until you really start seeing results, but it is happening. Our paradise timeline is coming back together. The planet is ascending, um, that doesn't, I don't think that means some people have the belief that we're going to be fifth dimensional and we're going to be maybe um, not have bodies, that kind of stuff. I don't think that's what that means at all. I think, well, I know that's not what that means. We're still going to be here in human bodies, but we're going to have a direct connection with our guides, ancestors to that other side. The veil will be lifted. Thank you so is. much for saying this, because I remember there was this time, especially last year, when this, this information was so intense and many people, the, the two earths, right? And mm -hmm. many people were having a problem trying to imagine. So does it mean we will leave the physical form? And what I understand, what I really resonate with what you said that, and as for me too, I'm receiving more and more downloads. I always had like psychic abilities. I think we all are born with this. We are just programmed out of it. Right. But I think this is this is the true example of higher dimension already, because like you said, we are more connected. There is less and less separation between us and the higher frequencies. Now, can I also ask you, as far as those Akashic records, there was a movie, Kim, maybe you saw it. Um, you know, now I don't think it will be hard for me to watch any movies after what I know about Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But in the time when I used to watch them, there was a movie called Interstellar with Matthew uh, McConey. I always have problem pronouncing his last name. And in that movie, they actually showed us, I truly believe that was uh, an example of he went into the, the future and from the future, he was communicating with his family. There was like a tunnel 
and it looked like almost like this Akashic record, like the layers and layers and layers. How we individually can, I, I try myself, I do it through meditation, but how can we go into, or past life regression, but how can we go and let's say, find those lifetimes that we still need to work on or we don't have to do it. We can just keep on living life and life will bring it to us. That's it. Life will bring it to you. It will be that situation or person that, okay, so let me give you a couple examples. I've run into people in my work um, that I found out maybe at the time or at later that maybe they were someone who killed me in a past life or did this or that. And I didn't like them from the beginning. So it's just this feeling you have, you know? Mm -hmm. And so in, with this particular person I'm, I'm speaking of, it was about not being disempowered, you know, mm -hmm. standing your ground, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he was a person, um, actually I was one of the women um, in the Salem witchcraft trials. I remember that lifetime. This man, and I worked with him in this lifetime one day, um, I couldn't do it. There was something about him. I didn't know what it was at the time. I walked in the office of the supervisor, put my notice in that moment because it's like, I'm not working with this guy. I don't know what it is about him, but he was the one who persecuted me in that other lifetime. And so that was mine to take my power back and say, no, I'm not working for you. I don't like you. I, well, I didn't tell him that, but. Yes, but now, okay. So do you think this is, this is more the type of energy we working with, or this is a particular soul that we work with? Because it, it may be the same issue will be with a different, different phase, different place, the same energy. Right. Well, this one in particular, he was the actual person, but say the way it would work. So say um, I didn't get that lesson and I stayed there and worked and let him disempower me. Yeah. Um, the universe is going to keep bringing me other people to disempower me until I finally understand that I need to take my power back and say no and do what I know is right for me. And so that's how it works. The universe doesn't stop talking to you. You can try to shut the door and ignore it, but it just keeps bringing you more situations and they usually get a little more drastic as they go along. Yes. Like you'll hear somebody maybe with a, with a job that's not really a good fit for them and they don't like it. Mm -hmm. Well, first there starts being problems with coworkers. Mm -hmm. Then there's backstabbing and people are accusing them of things and they're getting written up for things they didn't do. And then pretty soon they get fired or laid off. Well, all of those were little signs that it's time, this isn't a good resonance for you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but you didn't get the first sign, the second sign. So now it's forced upon you yes. and that's kind of how it is. Yes. So, Kim, now let's talk about the dark energies. Um, two things about it I would like to ask you. First is, for the humanity right now, do you think we will, which the, the power of the darkness is dissolving, is getting less and less, I mean, they are losing, the, they actually lost the power. It doesn't mean they don't exist. They still do exist. So my question is, Will there, will there ever be time that they will cease to exist or we need this contrast to some extent? To some extent, because my understanding is if we didn't have the contrast and the duality, we couldn't hold physical form in a physical world. Okay. We, we wouldn't have the we wouldn't have been able to lower our vibration enough to hold form into a physical world. So there's always going to be, Interesting. I don't, it's not going to be as dark, but there's always going to be a positive charge and a negative charge. That's just the way energy works. Okay. So it then doesn't even flow without a positive charge or an energy charge and, and a negative charge. So they are still necessary to some extent, but then it means like the ascendant masters, that are over 10 or 12 uh, level, um, they are not experiencing the contrast as such, correct? Correct, correct. Now, those of us that are here in this world, when we, um, 
I guess you would call it zero point where you realize that all of this crazy stuff is going on and you're in this world, but you're not of it. You're just kind of an of, of a observer noticing it, but you see and act from a higher dimensional picture. And so the difference would be maybe somebody who is not seeing into a higher reality would not be discerning and would get themselves into trouble, show up at situations where there were going to be problems, where somebody who's at zero point and just noticing into the 3D world, but really more connected with the 5D world, they wouldn't even put themselves in that situation because it just wouldn't be a vibrational match. So what do you think the percentage of humanity will be with this awakening stage and the higher frequency, I mean, the fourth frequency, the fourth uh, dimension, I think a lot of people are on the fourth right now, but I'm talking, so one leg here, one leg there, right? Exactly, yes, yes. So how, how, how much you think percentage wise, would you be able to, to, to see it, feel it? You mean as far as how many right now are? And let's say this year, Kim, before the end of 2021. Okay, let me see what I get on that. I guess the number 35% and climbing. That's what, wow. okay. how it feels to me. Okay. And climbing. And uh, with that, it could go even higher. It just depends on, because um, really what it is is, for people to hold this higher vibration, they have to do their shadow work. Yeah. You know, they have to do, take, heal all of their wounds. Um, once they do that and their vibration increases, but the reason people aren't doing it is because they are afraid of the shadow work. Another interesting thing too, I was going to bring up that I, I found in my work is, you know, people will be afraid of doing their shadow work because of past life experiences. But for people that have had um, things happen in past lives where they're going to have trouble making a connection with source, people with head injuries, people who have been beheaded, people who have been scalped, people who have been persecuted for their religious beliefs, if they've had a history of that in their past life and many other things, they're just afraid to open those doors and let those memories come out because... Well, it's scary to them. Yes, but that's the only way to go, isn't it? That's the only way to go. Otherwise, they stay in denial and their vibration stays low. So one more thing I want to ask you is, I had a very strong connection with, with Jesus, with Yeshua. I had very profound meditation many years ago, and I actually saw him. He was talking to me. Oh, I've seen him too. Yes, I watched your last last video. It was beautiful. So what I would like to ask you is, and also for me, Archangel Michael. Um, now, I truly feel that we we are now really extra extra protected by them in this time of of the history. What we're going through through this spiritual war. Um, how you see this angelic realm scheme? I want to ask you, like, when you meet your clients, for example, do you see you see an aura, right? You see, you see those energies, or the the angels communicate with you through them, or how is that? It happens in a variety of ways. Mostly, it's through feeling. Mm. I will. Um, I will. Um, connect with their energy body and I can tell by the way the energy flow um, how they're how they're um, managing their energy they're either letting it they're in, either in flow and letting it um, flow naturally or they're in a state of resistance um, and so yes I do feel that both um, Christ Archangel Michael, many beings are here assisting us. I've had um, clients I'm doing healings with, and now this is mostly children. When I'm doing laying on of the hands with them, they will tell me that they see Jesus 
mm. in a circle around the earth with angels. Beautiful. And um, many people in that circle. And so I guess they're given that vision to be shown they're never alone. Mm -hmm. um, these beings are standing with us shoulder to shoulder, um, enlightening us, encouraging us. Thank you. This is so beautiful, especially when you mention children, because they are so pure. Mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. are so connected. And Till we start telling them that they can't see angels or communicate with guys and that they can. I remember it from when I was a child. Did you see, did you have like the invisible friend? Yes. Um, and um, purple. I, I couldn't shut, most people shut their eyes and they see black. I would see like a lava lamp with purple oh, all I the time. It. Yeah. So didn't can, know what it meant, but yeah. Can you tell me before we end this, and I hope we can have more interviews in oh, the I future. Oh, I hope so. Because there, I know that those people who are watching me, they, they need to tap into this energy to stabilize them. And sometimes one hour of interview like that on the higher frequency with really profound knowledge and wisdom it, it does miracles. I believe that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, yes, it does. How would you, uh, is there any advice to those who are watching from your experience, how they can find the resonance, balance, stability, and also how can you help people now virtually without, you know, meeting the clients? Because now it's a little bit strange with this whole situation. Um, well, it's actually, it's, to me, it's interesting um, how you can meet with clients because when you're working in higher dimensional, fifth dimensional mm -hmm. energy, <laughs> there is no time and space. Yeah. And so people are always surprised, um, you know, when you do an energy healing with them, because I'll be describing what I'm doing and, and feeling and they're surprised. They can, they can feel it in their body. It feels like little tingly, you know, goosebumps, electrical kind of feelings, good electrical kind of feelings, not like you're being shocked. And it does work from a distance. There is no difference. Can I ask you, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but is it the quantum healing, would you say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we mm -hmm. go. Right. It's quantum. You don't have to be in the same room. You just connect energy, energetically, soul to soul. Like um as like a like Christ when you've seen him. He, you know, you connected to energy. You that's how we do it. We connect with our higher self, and then we can connect with beings of light that are of higher energy quotients through our higher self. Yes, yes. So people can find you on your website, embodylight.com. I will attach below. Um, how, how, is, how often you post videos, Kim? You just posted recently. I think yesterday was the one yeah. about Christ. Yeah, um, I try to do once a week or so. Once a week, okay. Because I, I actually listened to quite some of your videos and they are incredible. I just like listening to your voice because you bring so much information, but it's also very soothing. So it calms down. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I've been trying to make little shorter videos. Um, for one thing, I have trouble sometimes staying with an hour video. You know, you get busy, you have things to do. But I, I just thought, well, I'm just going to address what each of these little topics mean and give insight into it because people hear these terms and they, there's so much misunderstanding about what they really mean. Thank you so much for being with me here today. Thank you for your work. Awesome. And I will ask my viewers um, questions if they have for you. So next time when we connect, then we will use some questions from, from people that go through many challenges, I know. But I'm so grateful we were able to connect, Kim. Thank you so much. Oh, well, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank I look forward to working with you again. Yes, me too.